I thought that I would share just a little glimpse and some of the wisdom and insights offered by the Prophet in the last and the final moments of his life. Because that was the ultimate concluding message. What the Prophet said, what the Prophet shared, and what he bequested in his last and final moments. It's a very powerful, very captivating, very, for a believer, a very gut-wrenching account. Where you feel like you are witnessing the departure of Muhammad Rasulullah But there's a few things that I want to highlight, inshaAllah. It's, it's something when I, I, I teach a class uh, where I go through the final week of the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that class takes about three hours but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select just a few things and highlight them that I feel that we can take home with us inshallah and we can implement immediately within our lives first and foremost in the last and final days of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he made a very specific point to reach out to to ask for to request time with every single person that the Prophet ﷺ had a personal relationship with. Everyone from Abu Rafi'ah. Who was Abu Rafi'ah? Abu Rafi'ah was a freed slave of the Prophet ﷺ. But he had a personal relationship with him. So he called Abu Rafi'ah so he could sit with him and talk to him. Z the son of Zayd ibn Haritha, his name was Usama. Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Who is Usama ibn Zayd? Usama's father was the, like the adopted son of the Prophet sallallahu And his mother was formerly the nanny of the Prophet sallallahu She had cared for the Prophet sallallahu when he was a child. And so even though, again, it's not a direct blood relation, the Prophet ﷺ requested for Usama to come. And he held his hand and he connected with him and bid him farewell. The Prophet ﷺ requested all of his family members, like his uncles and his cousins, Abbas, the sons of Abbas. He requested them to all come and he sat with them and spoke to them. All the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, the mothers of the believers, they came and they visited with him. And probably one of the most powerful and touching moments from those last moments of the Prophet ﷺ, any moment that he shared with anyone, was Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, the Prophet ﷺ passed away on Monday morning. And on Sunday evening, as the Prophet ﷺ was, uh, was lying there and his entire family was huddled around him, including the mothers of the believers, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha walked into the room. The Prophet ﷺ had his eyes closed, he was burning with fever, he was putting water on his own face with his hand. But when Fatima walked into the room, it's like the Prophet ﷺ realized, my Fatima is here. And he immediately looked towards the door and he started looking at Fatima, he couldn't even speak properly. So he looked at Fatima, like when Usama ibn Zayd came, he says the Prophet ﷺ pointed at me and he went like this and he pointed at me and he went like this. And I knew he was making dua for me. So when Fatima came in, he just started looking at Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha without breaking his stare. And we all turned around to look, what is the Prophet sallallahu looking at so intently? And we saw that it was Fatima. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in the narration, she swears, if you saw Fatima walk, it was like you were watching Muhammad walk sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She walked like him, she talked like him, she moved and gestured her hands like him. It was unmistakable that she was his daughter. And so everyone, when Fatima walked into the room, everyone cleared the way and backed away. And Fatima came and sat down by the Prophet ﷺ and held his hand and started to cry, seeing her father. And the Prophet ﷺ called her close and he whispered something into her ear. And when he whispered something into her ear, she started to sob like profusely, weep, cry severely. She couldn't catch her breath. And then he called her close again and he whispered something into her ear and she started to smile. And then at that time, she bid farewell to her beloved father and she got up and she left. And years later, or, or excuse me, days later, after everyone had kind of taken some time for grieving and mourning in the process, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, our mother Aisha, she goes to Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and says, I've been meaning to ask you about that interaction. It was fascinating. Please explain. 
And Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says that when I came and I was very distraught at seeing my father in such pain, but I had not yet come to terms. I had not made peace with the fact that my father was leaving. Her mother died when she was young. All she, her, her baby brothers died in front of her. All three of her older sisters passed away during her lifetime. All I have is my father left. And she said, when my father called me close, he whispered something to me saying that I've known that I am departing since Ramadan. Because every Ramadan, Jibreel comes and he re reviews a Quran with me. And this year when he came, we went over it twice. And that let me know that we were confirming the Quran, finalizing the review of the Quran, and it was time for me to go. And she said, I started to cry because that was the first time I actually accepted with my heart that I'm going to lose my father. And then when he called me close again, then he whispered to me, but you'll be the first of my family to join me in the hereafter. And I smiled. And Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha would leave peacefully and beautifully from this world six months after her father passed away. Why do I mention this? I'm trying to highlight some lessons here. A concluding message. Number one, cherish your personal relationships. Value the people in your life. Build fruitful, beneficial, powerful, meaningful relationships. Cherish the people in your life. Let this weekend be a weekend of renewal. There might be broken hearts. There might be hurt feelings. There might be grievances and disagreements and, and, and quarrels and issues. Let this weekend be a moment of rejuvenation. Repent, renew. And as you're going home from here, call someone, text someone, go to someone's house. Knock on someone's door, hug them, embrace them, kiss them. And cherish those personal relationships. That was a lesson from the life of the Prophet and a concluding message. Number two, the Prophet Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, the day before the Prophet passed away, he said this one key piece of advice. He said, Ahsinu adhanna billah. Ahsinu adhanna billah. Always have good expectations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always have the best of expectations from Allah. That's something very, very important. We are struggling. We are dealing with some spiritual bleakness. People lack hope. People don't see any lights on the horizon. We need to renew our Iman, renew our faith and know who we believe in. And His might and His power and His greatness. And he can bring light in the middle of the night. He can deliver us from the most overwhelming of circumstances. As one of the speakers before me mentioned, He will make a way. You just have to believe. So, always know that Allah will make a way for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And then another very powerful message. Concluding message from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said As-Salaah, As-Salaah, wa ma malakat imanukum. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Sallu salatakum wa addu zakat wa atu zakatakum wa addu haqqa wa addu haqqa man malakat imanukum. He, the Prophet وسلم, he said in another narration, pray your salah, give your zakah, and look after, fulfill the rights of the people that you are responsible for. This is the balance that we have to learn to strike in our lives. Maintain your relationship with Allah. And the primary form of that is keeping up with your prayers. And then secondly, take care of the people, value the people, cherish the people. Care for the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you responsibility over. We will be asked about it. We will be, we will be accounted for it. There is a reckoning that is coming. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will readily forgive our indiscretions in regards to Him. But when we violate other people's rights, that's something that won't be so easily forgiven. We will be held to account for it. 
We've heard about the month of Ramadan and we talk about Salah and Quran and fasting. Make this Ramadan a time of personal improvements as well. Fix your character. Repair your relationships. Learn to be more responsible in your personal life and towards the people that have rights upon you. And lastly and finally, what I'll mention here as a concluding message. When the Prophet wasallam, he went a week before he passed away, he called one of the other people, who was another freed slave, the Prophet wasallam, had freed him. And so he was very close to the Prophet wasallam. He called him and he said, take me to Al-Baqir. The graveyard of Medina, I want to go pay my respects. His family was there, his children were there, his friends and companions were there. So he said, I want to go pay my respects one last time. And he helped him walk and he went all the way to the graveyard and paid his respects there. And afterwards, as he was walking back, he says to the, to, to the, to the man who's helping him walk, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the slave a choice. He gave me a choice to continue to live in this world or to depart from this world and go and be with Allah. And the man started to cry and he said, please tell me, I beg you, I will do anything. Tell me that you asked to stay. I need you to stay, we need you to stay. And the Prophet wasallam said, no, it's time for me to go and be with Allah. Allahumma illa rafiq al-a'la. Oh Allah, I want to be with you. And so I mentioned this last and final point here, not to create a sense of morbidity, nor to create a sense of, you know, giving up on this particular life, but to understand that we do have a final destination. We do have a goal and objective. And the more we are focused on the goal and the objective and the final destination, the more meaningfully, the more with dignity and honor and focus and respect will we live this particular life. And I'll end by quoting a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, found in the book of Tirmidhi. It's an authentic narration from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says the Prophet wasallam said, Man khafa adlaja. Man khafa adlaja. It's a very powerful, you know, metaphor and example, a visual from the Prophet And What this means is when you are traveling and you're afraid of being pursued, while traveling. Like the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when they were leaving Mecca, they knew the Meccans were trying to assassinate them. So when did they leave? They left at night. They slipped out at night. Man khafa adlaja. Somebody who's afraid for their safety tries to leave at night. Wa man adlaja balagal manzila. And somebody who is very strategic in their departure will actually reach their destination. What does that exactly mean? What that means is that when you know that there is, there are obstacles, there are challenges, such as the, in the example of travel, traveling, like in the example of Hijrah, you have some people that are trying to chase you and find you and kill you. You have people that are trying to hunt you down. So when you know in any endeavor that there are challenges, that there are obstacles, you have to be willing to figure out an alternative strategy. You have to put thought into it. You have to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to avoid the danger. And if the answer, the strategic plan is very, very inconvenient, like traveling in the middle of the night, we're not talking about taking a road trip. We're not talking about taking a red eye flight. We're talking about traveling through the middle of the desert on camelback in the middle of the night. Where the only light you have is whatever the moon is providing for you. That's it. It's very dangerous. But you have to recognize the challenges. You have to figure out an alternative strategy and you have to be willing to sacrifice. And then he says, And if you're willing to do that, recognize challenges, strategize, and then sacrifice, you will reach your destination. And then the Prophet ﷺ brings it together. And I'll conclude with this. 
He says, Ala in Allahi Ghaliya. He says that the merchandise, the end goal, the objective of what we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very precious. It will not come very easily. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. It won't come easily. Allah inna sil'at Allahi al Jannah. Because what we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we want paradise. And the smallest bit of paradise is more precious, more valuable, more beautiful than this world, whole world and whatever it contains. So seize the opportunity, recognize the challenges, strategize, know your goal, and then be willing to sacrifice to reach your goal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability to succeed in this life. Say Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to reach our objective in the life of the hereafter. Say Ameen.